then you know something of the color of her eyes. I would not talk so foolishly, but there's a space in me she steps into, a tall shadow, an absence that howls like a grave or a dead wind when she is not there. I am a fool for her, letting all of me be a mile-long night breeze. If she is but a straw held up, a single golden hair, I might rush over forever. I love Marsha Kersner like the taste of my own spit, like my own blood in my veins, ready to melt in her heat like snow carried south and dropped in Pacific surges, my mouth dissolved in tropical mangoes and sweet. She is another tall self I keep inside and lean on like a prop, a magic self that sets me whirling and dispersing, an anchoring self like a two-ton idol, thin and heavy in the bed, me fastened to it like a small burnt lizard. Let me just hold this mantis woman in my arms, this tall, beautiful fire with green eyes. Let me just lick the length of this green blade, this lightning filament of her love, and I will sizzle with it, a long green furrow in my spirit where a jade lake reaches for the peaks. Her hand is a leaf that can calm the passage of a storm, and yet it is a leaf that sings in its work, like a reed made of human flesh, a musical flesh of gasps and sighs, a high, sweet strand of water like a violin string. Ah, draw the bow down again, my loved one, across the heart, across the soul. Draw the bow down again and play forever the long, sweet notes of our love. Um, this, this verges on the, on the activities of love. <laughs> I like the poetry of ideas. I like um, a lot of poetry I read these days has got a very good technique. I also like there to be ideas in poem. So I've often tried to harness my little imagination to come up with positive solutions to the problems that I often decry. So this, this is called an idea for genetic engineering. <laughs> <laughs> and it's in the what if there were a moral act orgasm? <laughs> a new way to come because you stood up for a just cause? A way to come if you're whacked by a leg in a protest? A way to come wonderful if you're tear gassed and handcuffed? What if there were dirty little booths on Young Street where you could furtively give huge amounts of coin to charity and have an orgasm that just holds your bone? It would be so erotic to be in Doctors Without Borders. <laughs> if you were a pro bono lawyer against Monsanto, you'd hardly be able to walk with the orgasm. <laughs> What if we found a gene splice to make us lust for peace in the streets like it was the love of our lives? What if only truth could get us hot and bothered? We should be re-engineered so that the only way to really get our rocks off is to end child poverty on earth. Oh. Um, another one that's it's about, more about the love of God, I suppose. Uh, it's called Book of Job's. Once, God was talking to Satan, and he commented how pleased he was now that the people were finally good, now that they finally truly loved him. But Satan said, they love you because you have given them abundant lives and much freedom. It is not yourself they love you for. In this way, God was tricked into testing people. To settle the issue with Satan, he destroyed all unions everywhere. <laughs> Even without their unions, most people clearly still loved God, but Satan was unconvinced. So God took away safety regulations, and then he took away health care, and many of them were burned or had their hands crushed, but still the great masses of people continued loving God. 
Satan was not persuaded. They still have jobs. They have purpose. That is what they love, he asserted. Ten million jobs disappeared with a wave of God's hand, but Satan just sneered. So, God took away their social assistance and then their employment insurance. When love of God remained high, it was clear that Satan was beginning to waver. But God went even further to make his point. He took away their homes. He took away their rights. He even took away their family bonds so they fell to fighting among each other. Do you see how human love for God is undiminished, he gloated? Look, he roared. He began to kill their children. They were crushed by cars. They were blown up by roadside bombs. They fell into fratricidal wars, and a great hunger fell over all the earth. But even more frequently, the people fell to their knees and prayed. Even more loudly, they yelled their devotions. <laughs> And I'll finish with, go gather up the love. Go, gather up the love. I know now what we must do. It is in your eyes and my eyes. Go, and gather it up, look by look, gaze by gaze. One flame in a hand, one holy flame, two flames gathered up. Gather up the love in our children. Gather it through slum and hovel, through mansion and factory, with great gentleness go, taking a spark here, a glow there, turning down none of it. Gather it up and free it, if even just in your own lips, through your own heart, by being strong, by going always beyond your limits. Gather it to saturation, long past your center, deeper than the full depth of you. Gather it up in beads, in blue flames, in fierce bonfires. Let there be a leap of love in the center of the earth, a flame higher than the heavens, a leap of our commitment, of our will, a leap of fire straight into the stars. Well, uh, it could only be at the Love Poetry Festival that one may encounter such enlightenment. Uh, and I want to I want to thank Robert again for for what a, a great reading and and uh, and set the stage for the arrival of even more enlightenment uh, in the in the spirit and framing of Anna Yin the inaugural poet laureate of Mississauga, and I want you to think about that for a moment. This is the inaugural poet laureate of Pearson Airport, <laughs> the most important airport in Canada, uh, and a pretty important in North America, I guess, too. But in any event, uh, I've known Anne for a number of years. Uh, uh, she is like Michelle, a great dynamo. Uh, in terms of organizing uh, poetry activities of every sort. And, and we are really, uh, 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 what can I say, that we should be and must be extremely thankful to have her energy and insight and commitment and the beauty of her work as well. So she has six poetry books. The latest is entitled Seven Nights with the Chinese Zodiac. And I know I shouldn't keep on ad living like this, but I, want, I just want to say for myself, I like the fact I've got two zodiac signs. There's Aquarius, and then there's also the Year of the Rat, 1960, for anybody who's wondering. Uh, and and uh, I sort of like this. I'm a rat Aquarius, or I'm an Aquarian rat. But I like it because it all gives me power, it's all good. I'm an Aquarian rat and a child of God. <laughs> all at the same time. I'm an Aquarian rat and a child of God. Uh, so there we go. But anyway. Uh, Seven Nights with Chinese Zodiac, which is a very fine book, Black Moss Press. Uh, Anna won the 2005 Ted Plantos Memorial Award, two M-A-R-T-Y Awards, and the 2013 Professional Achievement Award from CPAC, etc. Her works have appeared in ARC Poetry on CBC Radio in China Daily and in the New York Times, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, thank you, George, and thank you all for being here. And 
I especially want to thank you, George and Michelle, for arranging this event. And you being here to celebrate the La Forges Festival in memory of Milton and uh, Gwendolyn. Mm -hmm. And uh, as, uh, as Robert read the, uh, the poem by Milton, I shout loud. I translated it. And I want to special thank my friend and book editor, Terry Mark. And in 2006, he invited me to translate the several um, Canadian poets poems, like uh, Al Pudi, Mel Atten, and also uh, the poem is I Shall Love. So now I want to read the Chinese version, and just for a little bit of favor, like uh, you, you can hear the sounding, the different sounding. So. But uh, of course, I don't have this kind of energy. <laughs> like, I shall love. <laughs> so I might be a little bit quiet. But I like the poem because <laughs> the poem is not only for love, but also love of a relationship. But also for me, I think the love for your country is a little bit of a political poem as well. So here's the Chinese version. Wo Hu Hai Ai. 我呼喊爱，在风暴如雪微薄蜿蜒的寒冷里，因为我的心就像长毛的一样，冲出最近当痛苦。哭喊他映雪的迹象。我呼喊爱，进入你的苦痛。当天空开裂，像银镜碎片
using my way. I use uh, I I will go south. Okay. <laughs> now I want to read uh, another poem from my first collection, Brings Towards Sunlight. There, there are many rock poems, so I will read one or two. So the title is Rest Berries. Rest Berries. On our bed, we lie like flat fish. Outside, stars grow old. A white cocoon casts its image on the river. In sparse shadows, a river dangles. Along the thorn fence, raspberries bleed. They remember once being the fire, enjoying the moth flapping its wings to the to flames. Mm. So thank, uh, I want to read another one. is uh, is about the two great poets. I always feel we poets are orphans, <laughs> and it's very easy to fall in love with another poet. And uh, of course, in spirit, <laughs> it's not a physical way, <laughs> in a soul connection way, right? So this is my poem to pay my homage to two great poet, poets, Ted Hughes and Lee Paul. So the title is, After Reading Ted Hughes, Full and Little Freedom. I fall in love with you, Moon, seeing you step back like a timid artist. Listening to the night, you come out, a pale, lifted. Moon, they're gone. They left you watching over the river. How many years since, and you watched the small village becoming a floating island. Among rows of windows, the night flows, and I'm wide awake. How much I want to imitate Lee Paul dancing with his white sleeves a humming from his burning heart, night after night, inviting you for a drink. The wine never drank, yet he joined in the silver river. Moon, lift your bucket, come out once more. I won't make a song. There is a beautiful story behind it. And uh, Lee Paul wrote many, many beautiful poems for the moon. When he was old, he was drunk, he was on the boat, he saw the moon on the river. He wanted to hug the moon, so he jumped and he died. It was a sad story, but also it's a very, very beautiful story because for me, I think he married the moon. Mm. <laughs> And I want to read a poem, a poem, rock poem from this new collection uh, last year published by Black Moss. And I want to especially thank George. <laughs> he wrote a powerful blurb for it, and that time he was a taunt of Port Laureate. <laughs> so, so this book now, the prize is, uh, is priceless now. And, and he also reviewed this book, so. And uh, I want to read a poem. The title is uh, Sing City. So perfect for this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I, when I first visited, when I first visited, visited uh, Las Vegas, I felt so tempted. I don't want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> so I wrote this poem, The Sing City. Here. I could fall in love with a splendid snake. My plain soul longs for style and fades into a rippling mirror. It's fine to get lost among enticements. Everything wears infident hues. Each speaks volumes of glamour. In gleaming colors, the snake swallows the sky. The tree from the garden falls. 
Well, I stay all day. My skin is similar. I battle with a lot of sin and become sinful. The sun turns itself into a giant seasoning apple. <laughs> Uh, I'll read Gwendolyn McEwen first. 
You held out the light. You held out the light to light my cigarette. But when I leaned down to the flame, it singed my eyebrows and my hair. Now it is always the same. No matter where we meet, you burn me. <laughs> I must always stop and rub my eyes and beat the living fire from my hair. That's one of those Jim Morrison poems. <laughs> you know, from, from the day back in the day, oh, I want to light my fire. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> And this is from her one-time husband, Milton Acorn. Uh, Live with me on earth under the invisible daylight moon. And it actually has a rhythm, that, that title, which is very nice. And this is probably, probably written for her. Probably written for Gwen Lovett. Live with me on earth among red berries and bluebirds. And leafy young twigs whispering. Within such little spaces, between such floors of green, such figures in the clouds, that two of us could fill our lives with delicate wanting. Where stars past the spruce cups mingle with fireflies, or the dayscape flings a thousand tones of light back at the sun. Be any one of the colors of an earth lover. Walk with me and sometimes cover your shadow with mine. I'm going to read a, a couple of my own poems, or maybe a, a slight little few of my poems, just a few, couple little poems. Uh, and and uh, I'll read something. I'll try to find something to read from this book, Gold, uh, which is my latest coloring book. And, and uh, I do have a couple of copies available for sale. I don't mind mentioning it. Only $20. Only $20! Only $20! Only $20! Only only yeah, uh, so, uh, 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 yeah, so uh, the, the trick about this book is that the love poems that were included were basically not really love poems. <laughs> As I say, it's a bit of a trick. Uh, so, but anyway, I'll do my best uh, to, uh, but I'm losing up all, using up all my time, so here we go. Uh, nope, can't read that one. Uh, <laughs> Uh, nope, can't read that one. Uh, yeah, these, these are sort of like negative erotic poems, so that's a problem. All right, um, so okay, I will read uh, Abandonment. I know, I, 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 no, I can't, well, I could. All right, I will. All right, so Abandonment. This is, this is basically kind of folk uh, song. That's how I'll explain it. It's a kind of a folk song, so there's... You know, registers of, of love and lust and so on, and disappointment and sorrow and rejection and blues. <laughs> and blues. Abandonment. I sought her whom my soul loved. I was languishing, drooling like a dog. I brought no painted bottle of Chianti. I brought a dark crimson wine subtle as smoke. I wanted our bed to turn into a cake with frosting spilled about. I desired our bed to turn into a cake with frosting spilled everywhere. But that woman that one guzzling wench, as white as froth, and her hair all gold, and her body all gorgeous.
Paris, her hair all gold, and her body all gorgeous, whose fine mouth sweats only sweetness, that Nova Scotianess who sings hymns in church and squeals in bed, who sings hymns in church and squeals in bed, I can't embrace or fondle. I don't fondle and embrace, for she won't be wooed to wed. Brass jingles when she shakes the bed. Now both rusty dusk and blood red dawn I hear. Leaven sorrow as heavy as iron. She won't be mine, no, not unless her church okays a brothel. She's a bad woman. <laughs> She'll make a bad wife. She's gonna be a bad mother. She's a bad woman. She's gonna make a bad wife. She's gonna be a bad mother. Call me a dandy harlequin, a handy fool. I'm a gonna tramp into New Brunswick. I'm a gonna hike out of Nova Scotia, dark Nova and dreary Scotia, the sea's stronghold where the Atlantic swamp sailors and scuppers their ships. Ah, oh, forget the sumptuous sea shanties of Nova Scotia. Nothing here ain't wind molested. No trivial breeze rebuffs me. This air has fangs. You see the sea? Its brine is my undrunk wine. The wind balls denunciations. Trees shriek back. I'm gonna have to cross over to New Brunswick. I'm gonna have to go into New Brunswick. I'm gonna have to enter New Brunswick. I'm gonna have to cross over from Nova Scotia into New Old Brunswick. That province top with stars. I gotta go to New Brunswick to find myself a better, unbitter woman. I'm gonna have to get myself to New Brunswick to find myself a proper kind of lover. I'm gonna have to abandon Nova Scotia and go into New Brunswick to find myself a woman who will love me. I'm gonna find a better, unbitter woman only in New Brunswick. I'm gonna find myself a dirty little pigeon <laughs> only in New Brunswick and always in New Brunswick Am I going to find a dirty little pigeon? <laughs> Mary, with her salacious favors, I mean, very merry Christmassy with her salacious favors. I'm going to find that woman lightly down in St. John. I'm going to find her down in St. John, New Brunswick. I'm going to find her on 47 Morris Street in St. John. I'm going to get myself down to 47 Moore Street in St. John, New Brunswick. Go down to 47 Moore Street. I'm going to find her down on all fours. I'm going to find her down on all fours at 47 Moore Street. Only in God forsaken New Brunswick. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to read a few poems for you. <laughs> Luckily, 47 Moore Street has been bulldozed. <laughs> no longer exists. So don't go looking for 47 Moore Street. Um, yeah, a couple of, of sonnets from this book, Extra List of Sonnets, which is also available from me for only $20. Only $20. Extra List of Sonnets. These uh, poems talk about love. Uh, between uh, two people, different generations, uh, older, younger, uh, older woman, younger man, and, and uh, uh, so I'll just read a few of these, and that's it. Okay, so stanzas written in reflection, and there's a little bit of rhyme here too. 
This is in the voice of the lady. And she says, my sugar silver nakedness was your dream, al fresco, in Rodos where we found ourselves talking a year ago. Were we mumbling culprits flirting over ale, numinous as lunatics? Springtime was, but not I, promiscuous. Bitterly you walled off yourself, acted a haughty poet, a standoffish chap, ignoring my entrance, my exit. In truth, amid blurry moonlight and palms, the seas murmur, and jugs of lemony Greek wine, I schemed for no lover. My passion moot, my breathing pale, your bonhomie crafted. I was pure pelt, teeth and gristle, not lusting for your bed. To live and breathe sex, its sizzle of surprise unto bland chill. Or seal my lips upon your lips to kiss and kiss until was not my agenda. Never. I felt our age difference. Perhaps pimps list age gowns love best. False old gowns value friends. If I'm a wan and wavering woman, I'm content to nip at delights, not golf. But you came laughing, guffaws, not titters, and talking poetry, and pouring rosé. Uh, I should read something else that, that rhymes. And, and uh, something that is, yeah, OK, yeah, so here it is, it rhymes. All right, Valentine. My spry and sprightly Valentine, so dynamically serpentine, your spiced furrow I will harrow, milking nectar from the marrow, and when I triumph in your silk, spreading ecstatic streams of milk, and then percussive rutting paws, our climax to fresh coupling draws, elite, erotic, eldress, amply, damnably damp in dress, now more wife than ever mistress, you free Venus when you unleash thy beloved and bewitching niche, quim, just I, Justify, capiche? <laughs> and I'm going to finish up with a, a couple more. Uh, I should read something that's, that's just simply philosophical and not uh, sexy in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but that's hard to find here in the. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Horseman, I want to make love as if I have hooves and horn, and bray and brazen Maltese must. Slick sangria down our throats, pitch your butt twitchingly and heat your flanks, quivering. I prefer you raw, not some Puritan to drip, hot and honest as a filly, so our breathing stinks as natural as a zoo, and our slippery joints walk skanky sense. You scratch, bite, don't slap, and I'm grateful. Your animal being bears no animus. Hear my snorting breath, your kisses retort. Am I more animal than poet? Yes. I want to couch with you until the grass is an antique forest all about us. And I'm going to finish up again with something that, well, it does rhyme. And uh, so here it is, uh, touching. When we are near, what is dear is touching. Precarious is solitude too close to loneliness. When one can't dare to touch, for no one is near and no one is close. No clothing is carnal, not wool, not silk, unless it's touching you and you're clutching onto me 
and untouching carnal silk, coveting, covertly, overt, clutching. Alone, far I'm a monument of tears, for you are distant and your touch remote. Sordid magma, searing are my plague of tears. My heart's a volcanic island remote. An inferno royals my ribcage, my heart. Tears can't put out, lest yours touch, clutch my heart. Uh, thank you so much for your patience and your attention. Uh, I thank you all for, for uh, your attention here. I want, I want to thank Michelle once again for, for bringing all this to uh, fruition. And I want to thank Chief James Anglican Church by the Lake uh, for uh, this resonance. And St. Andrews. And St. Sorry. I want to thank St. Andrews Anglican Church by the Lake for this gorgeous uh, uh, premises resonant uh, afternoon. A beautiful, jazzy, gospel, spiritual infused uh, piano notes from Mr. Sharp. I just had I just had a couple of other people I wanted to thank, and one of them is Honey Novik for putting me in contact with people to get this event together. Uh, Karen Malone for helping me select some McEwen and Acorn poems that I suggested to the poets. Um, I appreciate that a great deal. Joyce Rogers, who's our contact for, for the church here, and Bella, who welcomed me with a nice glass of cold water when I walked in, because it was melting in the ground when I walked in. Uh, my husband, Rob, for putting together a fantastic, uh, beautiful poster for the event, as he does for every single one of my readings the last seven years. And again, I'm sorry, it's going to sound like a mutual admiration society, but George, for everything, for putting putting this event together. Roger Sharp, our kid is to play for a little bit more, so please stick around with the beautiful melodies. Thank you very much, Roger. All right.